Nick. Nick with Sweetwater here, and in today's short lesson, we're going to be learning one of the many classic rock riffs that reside on ACDC's magnum opus of an album, Back in Black. Specifically, we're going to learn the riff that opens the album's tenth and final track, Rock and Roll Ain't Noise Pollution. This one right here that involves a nifty bit of hybrid picking. <laughs> Incidentally, in this lesson I'm playing a lefty Gibson SG Standard 61 into a Blackstar St. James 50 watt head driving a Blackstar St. James vertical 2x12 cabinet. And for convenience, I'm running the cab rig output of the head straight into the camera. The reason I'm using the SG? Come on, it would be criminal not to, right? And as you can hear, my sound is clean with a nice subtle hint of distortion. Anyway, if you'd like to know any more about any of these items, there are links to them in the comments below. As just mentioned, Rock and Roll Ain't Noise Pollution is the 10th and final track on ACDC's 1980 album, Back in Black. This one right here. This None More Black release has thus far sold in excess of a staggering 50 million copies worldwide. And allegedly, that makes it the second best-selling album of all time, right behind Michael Jackson's Thriller. And now for a quick little bit of trivia concerning this song. Initially, ACDC only planned on having nine songs on the Back in Black album, but then both their management and record label asked them to write one more. According to legend, Malcolm and Angus Young came up with the music for this little ditty in about 15 minutes. As for the inspiration for the song's title, well, that's an interesting little story. Apparently, the band were in London at the time, and there was a big environmental health news story concerning the famous Marquee Club producing noise pollution after 11 o'clock at night because it was a loud venue in a built-up area. And so, the seminal classic Rock and Roll Ain't Noise Pollution was born. And, as an added bonus, the single of the same name made the top 15 in the English charts. Nice. Anyway, short trivia history lesson over. Let's learn the song's short but instantly memorable intro. We'll learn the simple way first, and then we'll get into a couple of little wrinkles if you'd like to emulate the exact way it sounds on the album at the very end of this video. Here's the so-called simple way. <laughs> Now, a lot of lessons on this intro tell you to ditch your pick completely and just use your fingers. Which is totally cool, by the way, and maybe the way Angus recorded it when he did it in the studio. This said, if you watch live videos of Angus playing this intro, including the official video for the song, if you pay close attention to his right picking hand, you'll see he's using his fingers and his pick. This combination of using your pick and also your picking hand fingers is called hybrid picking. That explained, let's play. The intro starts with you fingering the first fret note on the G string with your index finger, then playing the G string note and the open B string note by sounding them at exactly the same time, just like this. As you can see, I'm not merely strumming the two strings with a single pick stroke like this. Instead, I'm hitting the G string with my pick while I'm plucking the B string with the middle finger of my picking hand at the exact same time, just like this. So it's pick on G, pluck on B at exactly the same time. In fact, it's almost like I'm pinching the two strings together, going down on the G string with my pick while plucking up on the B string with my middle finger at the exact same time. Here it is one more time. And again. And just so you know, playing two different notes together like this is often called a dyad. Now, if you like, you could also do the exact same thing without using your pick at all by plucking the G string with your middle finger and the B string with your ring finger, like this. So middle finger on G, ring finger on B. And as you can see, I'm plucking both strings at the exact same time with an upward plucking movement with both fingers. Try both methods and see which one feels best to you. Then, uh, pick it. Sorry, that was an awful pun, but I just couldn't resist it. I personally prefer the pick and finger combo, but that's just me. 
Anyway, once you've chosen your preferred picking approach, you then do the exact same thing on the exact same two strings, but this time with your first finger barring the B and G strings at the second fret like this. Then you pluck them together like this. Got it? So, once again, pick on G string, pluck with middle finger on B string, together. So then if we play our first two dyads together, we have this. Next, guess what? Yep, we do the exact same thing, but this time with your second finger fingering the B string at the third fret, and your ring finger at the fourth fret on the G string. So we've got this. Got it? Second finger, third fret, B string, ring finger, fourth fret, G string, and then pick and pluck at the same time. And for good measure, I put some subtle finger vibrato on this one as well, just to spice things up a hair. Then if we tag this diet onto the end of our first two, we have this. And as you may have noticed if you listen carefully, I don't let the second dyad ring right up until I hit the third one. No, sir. There's a short moment of silence between the two. So it's not this. No, sir. It's this. Could you hear it? A little hole of silence. Now, to achieve this hole of silence, known in music theory as a rest, I use both of my hands. With my fretboard hand, I do the following. I relax my index finger so it remains on the strings but is no longer fretting them. So I go from this to that. And at the exact same time, I lightly bring down my middle and ring fingers on the strings like this. Can you see what I'm doing there? Let me do it again a little slower. So I relax this finger, but leave it on the strings, bring these two down at the same time. By doing this, this helps ensure I don't get any extraneous noise. And for good measure, I also bring my picking hand down on the strings at the exact same time as well, like this. Make sense? Economy of motion in action, using everything I have to kill those darn strings. Next up though, there's a slight change, we do this. As you can see, I've returned to barring the G and B strings at the second fret with my pointer finger, but this time I'm plucking three strings at the same time, not just two. I'm hitting the open A string with my pick while plucking the B and G strings at the exact same time with my middle and ring fingers respectively, just like this. And I repeat, as you can see in here, I'm hitting all three strings at the exact same time. And in case you're wondering, yep, this is an open A major chord we're playing. Minus a fifth, if you want to be theoretically correct. Anyway, I pluck this bad boy twice, exactly like this. And once again, I don't let either of them ring out like this. Instead, I play them staccato, which means abruptly, or if you prefer, as short stabs, just like this. Or a little slower. Just as I did a few seconds ago when creating the silence, which is known as a rest, I'm using both my hands to achieve this abrupt staccato sound I want. Once again, I relax my index finger so it remains on the strings, but it's no longer fretting them. And at the exact same time, I lightly bring down my middle and ring fingers down on the strings like this. Like I said, doing this not only ensures the G and B strings stop ringing out, but also the open A string too, because I'm covering that as well. Watch again. And as you've probably already surmised or guessed, the exact same time I also bring down my picking hand on the strings as well, just like this. Once again, this two-handed synchronicity, my big word of the day and also a very good police album, not only produces the desired stabbing effect, but also ensures my picking hand is already in place to do the next hybrid pick of those same three strings, just like this. Perfect, and none more simple, allegedly. Now, a lot of lessons on this particular riff don't mention these subtle nuances like the rest, the vibrato, and the staccato stuff, and to me that's a darn shame, as it's those little touches like this that add character, vibe, and attitude to the whole thing. They make it rock and roll, darn it. They're all about that important human touch that you can't do on a piano. Anyway, if I combine these two hybrid picked A chords with our initial three dyads, we now have this.
Next up is another hybrid picking action on our A, G and B strings, but this time we're using the third dyad shape of our opening salvo, namely this one. The A string is played open again, but this time I've got my second finger at the third fret on the B string and my ring finger at the fourth fret on the G. Nice. Sounds good, right? Now, I do this one just once, and this means that so far, if we add everything together we've done so far, we've got this. Nice, we're getting there, my friend, we're getting there. In fact, we just now have to hit a single note on an open E5 power chord, and we'll be at the halfway stage. And that single note is this one. Yep, the third fret on the low E string with my middle finger, and I add a slight bend to it, which is known as a blues bend. Just gives it some attitude. I'm not bending up at half step, I'm just bending it a smidgen by pulling it down towards the floor. This is often called a quarter step bend, and it's something, once again, you can't do on a piano. And once again, it gives a note attitude. Just remember, only bend it slightly, don't overdo it. Use your ears, my friend, use your ears. This single slightly bent note is then followed by an open E5 power chord, this one right here. And to do this, as you see, it's really simple. I merely bar the A and D strings at the second fret with my first finger like this, and then hit those two strings in the open E string with a single deaf downstroke with my pick, just like this. So, if we add our slightly bent G note and this E5 chord to what we've done so far, we now have this. Nice, and just so you know, we're not only halfway through the riff at this point, we're really cooking with gas because we already know all but the final chord of the second half of the riff, which goes like this. This is the second half of the riff. So, our first half is this. And our second half is this. So, as you've probably just surmised from hearing that, to play the second half, we repeat the first half as far as the two consecutive open A chords, namely these two. And then we jump straight to the slightly bent G note like this. And then we finish with another E5 power chord, but this time at the seventh fret, like this. And after we pick it, we slide it off like this, towards the nut. This is how I personally finger this last E5 power chord. I put my index finger at the E note at the seventh fret on the A string, then I bar the D and G strings at the ninth fret with my pinky, like this. And then I hit not only these three strings together, the A, D, and G, but also hit the open low E string note as well. So it's nice, big, and chunky. Now, some people like to do the bar at the ninth fret with their ring finger like this, and others like to do this. They'll play the note at the ninth fret on the D string with their third finger, and the note at the ninth fret on the G string with their pinky like this. As always, try all three and go with the one that feels most comfortable to you. And there you have it, my friend. We're done. That's the intro riff to Rock and Roll Ain't Noise Pollution. Now, as you may remember, at the very start of this video, I said that this was the so-called simple way of playing this riff. And I said this because if you listen very carefully to the studio recorded version of this song, you'll hear Angus also plucks the high open E string note on the first dyad, which is no longer a dyad when he adds that third string. So here's what it sounds like when he plays it. Once again. And also, if you get really pedantic about it, on the second half of the first time through the intro riff, he actually only hits the G string note on that first dyad. So once again, it's not a dyad at all, it's a single note. So the first time through the riff, namely the simple way isn't this. It's actually this on the album.
simple little things that do make a difference. That said, to my ears, both ways sound just great, so who cares? Just pick the one you like and play it. I can assure you of one thing, whichever way you do it, it sure as heck ain't noise pollution. Unless, of course, you're way, way, way out of tune and out of time, of course. So don't do that. And there you have it, amigo, the intro to the legendary ACDC classic, which also happens to serve as a neat little introduction to the art of hybrid picking if you've never tried it before. Have fun with this one, and also try hybrid picking some riffs and licks of your own. They sound really good. If you don't believe me, just hear Zach Wilde, because he's a master of that, as is John Five. That said, I'm not, so I'm out of here. See ya. <laughs> Thanks so very much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, nicely please, and also subscribe. Click here for more videos like this and go to sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs. Thanks again for watching. See ya.